Okay, welcome to lesson 2.3 on chapter two, lesson three. Your essential question here is, how does understanding place value help you multiply tens, hundreds, and thousands? We're gonna turn that into an I can statement, so we're gonna replace how does with I can. I can understand place value to help me multiply tens, hundreds, and thousands. Down here on the unlock the problem, first we're gonna read the problem. Each car on a train has 200 seats. How many seats are on a train with eight cars? So we're gonna think in our head. How many cars long is the train? It's important that you know that a car, when we're talking about trains, is one section of the train, okay? So how many cars long is the train? Well, it's eight cars long. So it says seats are on a train with eight cars. How many seats are in each car? There are 200 seats in each car. So we are essentially finding what eight times 200 is because we wanna find out how many total seats are on the whole train. We know that the train has eight cars and for each car there are 200 seats. So we're gonna show you three different ways to do this problem or a problem similar to this today. The first way that I'm going to show you is to draw a quick picture. Go ahead and look down here where it says one way. We know that each one of these squares is worth 100. Okay, each one of these squares is worth 100. So if each car has 200 seats, then for every two would be one car. So car one, this would be car two, car three, car four, car five, car six, car seven, and car eight. So there we have represented all eight cars and there are 200 seats for each car. It's important to know that each hundred, so you would count how many hundreds you have here. You have 200, 400, 600, 800, 1,000. So that's gonna transfer over to mean that all of these that they've circled for you is equal to 1,000. And we know that when we have a square with a capital T in it, that represents 1,000, okay? So this part that's circled would represent 10 of these flats, okay? Or we know that another way to represent 10 of those flats would be, it's kind of gonna be weird, but you can see this cube, okay? That's worth a thousand. Okay, so you're gonna think in your head, 10 hundreds right here are equal to is equal to 1,000, okay? But that's not all we have here. We also have these three cars right here, C6, C7, and C8, okay? And we know that each one of these is worth 100, so each car has 200 passengers. So in your head, you're gonna think six hundreds is equal to how much? Using your knowledge of place value, you should be able to determine that six hundreds is worth 600. Okay, it's important for us to see here that yes, we have 600 seats, but we don't have enough to trade for a, a cube, okay, or a thousand, okay? So we're gonna have to actually add what we have here, the thousand, plus what we have here, the 600. So that's what you see they've written down here for you. 1,000 plus 600 is what? Think about that in your head. 1,000 plus 600. 1,000 plus 600 is 1,600 or 1,600. Another way you can use your knowledge of place value. After chapter one, you should feel pretty good about place value. Okay, so instead of drawing a picture, you could use your knowledge of place value. We know that eight, 
cars is how many we have. Okay, so we have eight cars. For each car, there are 200 seats. So eight times how many hundreds? Well, eight times two hundreds. So how many hundreds do we have? So if you were to think about how many hundreds you would have, you'd do eight times two, and eight times two is what? Eight times two is 16. So you have 16 hundreds. You think in your head, 16 hundreds is 1,600, just like we saw in the picture above. Okay, so 1,600. So there are 1,600 seats on a train with eight cars. Okay. Okay, now we are moving on to page 76. This page is going to show us other ways to use place value to help us multiply tens, hundreds, and thousands. Okay, um, part A, I'm going to use a number line. For this problem it says, Bob's sled shop rents 4,000 sleds each month. How many sleds does the store rent in six months? First of all, I know that this is a multiplication problem because um, I'm taking equal groups because each month it's the same amount and I'm going to be adding those together or I could take them and multiply them since they're equal. So my problem is finding six groups of 4,000. Okay, multiplication can be thought of as repeated addition. So on the number lines below, I'm going to show how I would add six times to find what six groups of a number would be. Okay, on this number line, I'm just going by, f I'm adding four each time. So it would be zero plus four is four, four plus four is eight, eight plus four is 12, 12 plus four is 16, 16 plus four is 20, 20 plus four is 24. So my basic fact is that six times four is 24. That's a fact that most of us know. But my problem isn't six times four, my problem is six times 4,000. So instead of doing, um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that up and multiply by 10 with my, so now I'm gonna be doing six times 40. So instead of making jumps of four, I'm gonna add 40 each time. So zero plus 40 is 40, 40 plus 40 is 80, 80 plus 40 is 120, 120 plus 40, is 160, 160 plus 40 is 200, and 200 plus 40 is 240. Okay, so all I did was, in this problem I had six times four is 24, now I have six times 40 is 240. So both my factor and my product have an extra zero. Okay, okay so that now my problem is still six times 4,000, so I haven't made it there yet. So this time, instead of doing plus 40, I'm going to do plus 400 on each of my jumps. So you can see it's very similar to the last number line I did, except instead of 40s, I'm doing 400s. So 1,200 plus 400 is 1,600. 1,600 plus 400 is 2,000. And 2,000 plus 400 is 2,400. So now, my, uh, instead of multiplying by 4 or 40, I'm doing 400, and my answer is 2,400 or 2,400. Um, the last one, I'm going to um, add 4,000 instead of 400 on each of my jumps. So 4,000 plus 4,000 is 8,000. 8,000 plus 4,000 is 12,000. 12,000 plus 4,000 is 16,000. 16,000 plus 4,000 is 20,000, and 20,000 plus 4,000 is 24,000. So basically what these number lines are showing you is that if you know what 6 times 4 is, then you can easily figure out what 6 times 4,000 is by following the pattern. Okay, so Bob's sled shop rents, 6 times 4,000, he rents 24,000 sleds in 6 months.
Okay, now we're moving on to part B. Some of you may have noticed in part A with the number line that there's a pattern to the facts over here on the right side. Okay, we're going to explore that pattern more down here with another basic fact. The basic fact that we're using now is 3 times 7 equals 21. Okay, using the pattern from above, some of you may have noticed that each time we added a zero, we got an extra zero in our product. So for this one, 3 times 70 is 210. On this one, since we're doing 3 times 7, that would be 21, but this, now it's 3 times 700, so I have two extra zeros. So I'm going to put two extra zeros on here, and now I have 2,100. Okay? And then down here, I'm going to do the same thing, 3 times 7 again, so it's 21. And then instead of two zeros, I have one, two, three zeros and my answer is 21,000. So if you can see a pattern that when you're multiplying by a number that has zeros in the end, you can take the basic fact, do that multiplication fact, and then add your zeros back on your product. Okay? We're going to do another example. This example is just a little bit different because this answer that we get for our basic fact already has a zero in it because 8 times 5 is 40. Okay? So now, when I go to do my, my work, when I move, move up and put an extra zero on there, it's still 8 times 5 is 40, and I add my extra zero for the zero and 50. So on this one, 8 times 5 is 40, and then there's two zeros on 500, so that would be two more zeros. My answer is 4,000. 8 times 5 is still 40, and there's three zeros, so I'm adding three extra zeros. Okay. So my answer is 40,000. Okay, when you look at the bottom, how does the number of zeros in the product of 8 times 5,000 compare to the number of zeros in the factors? Explain. Okay, so when I'm looking at this, there are four zeros in the product. One, two, three, four. And only three zeros in the factors. One, two, three. The reason there's an extra zero here is because there was a zero in my answer already, in my basic fact answer. So I'm going to put that up here. There are four zeros in the product, or the answer to my multiplication problem. And only three zeros in the factors. because there is already a zero in the basic fact. Eight times five equals 40. So there's my zero that's already there. Okay, now we want you to go ahead and turn the page to page 77 and do the share and show section, numbers 1 through 6, on your own.